and many people eat out of depression, not just take drugs and alcohol. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Because it takes courage to live. It takes courage to get a lick and keep on ticking. Keep on ticking. It takes courage that some things that will happen in your life not to lose your mind. You got to learn. I'm telling y'all what life skills is in the word. If you learn to obey, if you learn that when, when you about ready to lose your mind, go sit down and say, God, you got to talk to me. And open that Bible, he'll give you something. Well, I don't know how you're going to flip it on this, what you call but I, you need to get a hard copy. Amen. Hallelujah. And God, I need a word from you. Amen. Hallelujah. And I'm telling you, he'll get the word just for you. And it'll keep your mind in perfect peace. It'll keep you. There's some things that will happen to us. We can't keep ourselves. Hallelujah. I'm going to read this. Listen. The enemies that came up against Hezekiah and his people. Listen to what they said. First of all, if you don't come out here and serve my great king, we going to, look at this, how bad they were talking. Say psychological warfare. Psychological warfare. You know, you ever had some bullies and kids, and I hope none of y'all in here just would be like animals and fighting. I hope you learn another way. Amen. Yes. I hope you learn the art of war. Thank you, Jesus. God's way. Listen to this. Y'all need to underline this here. Because let me tell you, you can go and get all the women you want or men you want. They can't help you fight like battles. In fact, they're going to be part of the problem. That's right. Y'all better tell these young ones. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. It's a war going on. The world is not teaching our young ones to keep their bodies and have people respect it. That's right. They're teaching them to let them everything dog it out. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Glory to God. And because our kids don't have love for themselves, they let everything dog them out. It takes courage to stand up and say, I'm keeping myself in Jesus' name until God give me the right one. And you're going to be laughed at and talked about. Hallelujah. In this day and age, a virgin or whoever's trying to keep themselves are the one laughed at. But the ones that got all kind of diseases, oh yeah, it got real quiet. Yeah. When I was in Philly, I counseled a couple of people and one lady, beautiful. I mean, would turn your hair when you walk down the street. But she had full blown AIDS. But that wasn't why she was brought to me for counseling. She went to a church down there, a pretty big church, and, but this deacon, and somebody else in the choir <clears throat> was getting to her and she was almost getting in. And she didn't want to tell her pastor we prayed for her. One of the ministers down in Philly had brought her to me. She worked with her. I said, you gotta tell it. They ain't got no business slipping up to you in the midnight hour, that's true. But you, you're a smoking gun, you gonna kill her. And so we prayed for her to have the courage to tell them she got eight. She don't look like it, but she got it. And there's some others that got some stuff that's not quite as deadly as that, but it leads to it. Come on. It's like y'all gotta, gotta tell this. Thank you, Jesus. Young people wind up with stuff all in their mouths and diseases. You know, the colleges now, they can't tell the parents, and these kids are suffering. Hallelujah. Because they 
on this. I was called up to to pray for a couple of ones, but they're on this. What, what, what's this? That confidentiality. And it's like, oh my God. Yo, yo, your mama need to know it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Glory to God. They need to know how to fight and pray for you in the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. Let me read verse 12. But y'all, please, let's pray for one another. He said, let's pray for one another. Not judge and look down. But let's pray because sin is already judged. Hallelujah, Jesus. He said this. He said, God ain't just sent me to you and your master. But he sent me to all of these to tell them. To speak to these men that sit on the wall. And they're going to eat their own dung and drink their own piss with you. Is that bad talk? That's, is that in the King James Version? Hallelujah. See, y'all think, y'all, some of y'all was looking at me like, what? <laughs> yes, right there. Hallelujah. They're talking some bad talk. You know, you come get, hey, if you don't come out and make an agreement with me, by the time I get finished with you, I'm going to make you eat your own mess and drink your own piss. Hallelujah. Then he goes on to say for 14, don't let Hezekiah deceive you. He should not be able to deliver you. And then it goes on in verse 16. It said, don't listen to Hezekiah. And that's how that warfare started. Don't listen to your pastor. Don't listen to your parents. Don't listen to what's good and right. And he said, come out here and make an agreement with me. And he said, verse 17, until I come and take you away to a land like your own. Now, somebody need to mark that down. A land like your own? I'm going to give you a land. Satan is a duplicator. He's a duplicator. And so he pulls the people out and he pulls the people of God out. I'm going to give you something that look like what God want to give you. I'm going to give you something that look like what God had. I can give you something better than what? Because my king Never mind the king of kings. My king can give you something that look like the king of kings can give you. Amen? And then he goes on and talks against him. Now in all this time, the people of God are feeling embarrassed and upset. Amen? And then if you read in 37, Hezekiah he heard it, he came, he tore his clothes, he came before God, he started to pray, he said to the prophet Isaiah, and the prophet Isaiah told him something, and here's what he said, and this is so important, and I should have wrote this down, because I wanted to just end it in the New Testament. Uh, thank you, Jesus. Verse 6. And Isaiah, in 37, verse 6, And the prophet Isaiah said to them, Thus shall you say to your master, that's to Hezekiah sent his own crew to come to uh, Isaiah, Thus said the Lord to your master, and somebody need to write this down, highlight this, Be not afraid of the words Hallelujah. you have heard. I know they're bullying you. I know they're talking about you and ridiculing you and making you think you're nothing. And that your trust in God means nothing. Hallelujah. Be not afraid of the words that you've heard. Be not 
not afraid of the words that you've heard, wherewith the servants of the king of Assyria have blasphemed me. Behold, I will send a blast upon him. He shall hear a rumor, return to his own land, and I will cause him to fall by the sword in his own land. Everybody say psychological warfare. Psychological warfare. They hadn't come in to try to fight with the people of God yet. But they use words. They use words. And words can get you down. Be not afraid. I want to end it. And it's so important to listen to this. It's so important to hear this. I want to end it in... On this life last on Tuesday, I'm going to be going into something else, but I'm going to end it in uh, Jesus. Help me, Father. Thank you, Jesus. I think it's Luke. I'm trying to see it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah. Y'all praying for me? Yes. It's Matthew chapter 27. Thank you for the prayer. It's more fair. Thank you, Lord. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, Jesus. We're going to start back with some fundraisers to get some better equipment. Amen. We want to pray that God will bless with some people to raise up to help raise funds for what we haven't had in the last couple of years, a youth banquet. But the committee would raise funds the whole year. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Lord. But so many were intimidated. So many got offended. So many, the love of many is wax cold, and they left off doing it. Because anything you do for God, anything you do, you're going to be ridiculed and put down for. Anything you step out on, you're going to be made to feel like you are not the best. Hallelujah! Hallelujah. That's called psychological warfare. It is called, I didn't read before I ended here. I need to read the definition. Everybody remember the word I told you? Psychological warfare, but what's that other word I introduced? The morale, but yes. Amen. Amen, y'all got it. Hallelujah, Jesus. E S P R I T D E C O R P S. And listen to what it means a sense of unity, of common interests and responsibilities, as developed among a group of persons closely associated in a task, a cause, or an enterprise. That's what it means, that camaraderie, that fellowship. David not only fought personally a battle, but then he learned how to maintain a group morale. Hear me. That is so important when we have people to head up the different things. To know because everything, even people on your team and in your group, want to tear down oh. and tear down the morale yes. Yes. of the ministry of the group while we build it. In Ezra and Nehemiah, the Bible said they hired hired counselors to frustrate the people's purpose in building. So it's no accident when you see people getting pulled off and backslide out the church. But we need people that will watch. And is the devil going to attack you personally? Yes, he is. Because we're in a war. And he knows your weakness. And he's going to work it over. And make you think you're nothing. Make you think you need to go out there and get something to look 
like the rest of the kings and the nations. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, God. Because the king of kings is not enough. The king of kings is not enough. The king of kings having to fight your battle is not enough. Hallelujah. It says maintaining a sense of unity. And that's what we need to work on. Amen. Some of you have done some great things individually. But we need to learn and to grow working together. Come on. To maintain group when people come complaining that you'll pray with them to help them to see the good side of it. Hallelujah, Jesus. Some people, if they were sent by the devil, when you try to turn that thing around, will get angry with you. Because their assignment is to pull you off of your assignment. Hallelujah. And it doesn't matter. I'm just using it in the church. But in anything, anything you try to do, anything you should proceed to go forth and do, there's a force working to try to pull you down and to try to pull you back and to try to hinder you. Amen? Amen? Amen. Amen. And it's not just for our young kids that's in school and some of them have dropped out because they worry about people hurting them and just talking about them. People have committed suicide because of people taunting them. And where's the church sitting? Talking. What somebody ain't doing for them. Well, thank God. Sometimes God has sent somebody for me to help, and I was in worse shape than they were. Come on. <laughs> Come on, dear. But his answer was when I prayed, I said, Lord, I need this, or Lord, I need that. Then he sent somebody along for me to give it to them. What kind of sense do that make? That don't make no sense. Come on. Until I received from him what he had for me. Then he's like, oh. <laughs> Woo, glory to God. Hallelujah. My mind just came across. And so that little bit I gave him, that person, what God gave me and what he opened up for me ain't even to be compared. In fact, after a while, I almost felt guilty about because I was complaining. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. God is blessed the giver. God blessed the giver. But check your morale. Some people don't even believe in Jesus. They don't believe in, in building up the church anymore. They don't believe in that. They've listened to the propaganda of the world. Oh, did I tell you that that's one of the things that they do when they fight the war, they throw out a, a bunch of propaganda. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Where did I stop? I said I was going to end it. In Matthew 27. Amen. Thank you. Amen. Okay. I can't, I can't, I can't go through all that, y'all. I just want to give you a little bit. I just want to go down to where they started spitting on it and talking about it. Hallelujah. Pilate asked them, what evil did Jesus do? But they hollered, crucify him. Crucify him. Pilate and his soldiers, his soldiers mocked Jesus. And they made fun of him. Listen, 41, I'm just, um, 39, mm, uh, Lord Jesus. Verse 37 said, they said over his head, the accusation written, this is king of the Jews. And they, the two thieves that were crucified with him, one on one side and one on the other. And they that passed by reviled him, wagging their heads. That's a shame. Yes. Hallelujah. Talking against Jesus, 
41 says the chief priest mocking him. The chief priest mocking him. The chief priests and elders mocking Jesus. And said, you don't say thou must not save yourself. He cannot even save himself. If he's the king of Israel, let him get down off of that cross. Now, here's the thing. We can understand the crowd because they think we got so many with us that we are all right. Amen. You know people when they feel better when they're in the crowd, right? We can understand the crowd. But check out the thief on the cross. How you going to join in with the crowd down there and you dying, man? You get ready to leave here. What kind of sense that they, you're going to mock Jesus? You know, and these people that's in the same situation usually understand what you're going through, right? He's going to be there and join in with the crowd and mocking Jesus. But I want to end it with this. But the morale of Jesus' disciples was down. Yes, yes. And Peter and them went back to doing what they used to do. Come on. Cussing like they used to cuss. Well, well. Because the world was mocking and putting down their leader. And deep down, we all can understand not what to be embarrassed. Deep down, we all can understand what to look like somebody before the nations. And so they went back to doing some things until Jesus rose. Hallelujah. 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 Thank you, God. I only share just a little bit of the psychological warfare that you're involved in, whether you want to be or not. And it hasn't changed. I challenge some of you. I challenge you to read the art of war. Yes. And you'll see how the enemy can use your brother, your sister, your mama, your daddy, your children, your boss, your kings, your leaders, whoever, to come through and intimidate you that you don't go any further in life. And you wind up just being hateful. You wind up being bitter, easily distracted. Hallelujah. But today, what I want to call on is the one that, first of all, have turned their lives over to Jesus, but knowing that you haven't won any real victories. That Jesus said, I came that you might have life. I want to do this first call for you that didn't think Jesus understood about you being embarrassed and being ashamed. And hallelujah, Jesus. And how can he help me? Because he's God. He never went through what I'm going through. I, I want to make that first call. Because Jesus came and he died and he rose. For us to receive victory over this flesh. Jesus died and he rose. And if we would have the courage to look at him. If we would have the courage. He want to give us abundant life. But you're going to have to come through. Your family and loved ones. And check this out. Lord help me. Y'all start to pray for me in the name of Jesus. Because I see all this distraction in the spirit. Say you're a liar. I just bind it up and I cast it out in Jesus' name. Through the shed blood of Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Hallelujah, Jesus. Jesus. 